Bap, bap, bap. We were talking about death in the beginning. Okay. I don't really, I'm not afraid of death. Is that weird? No. Nope. I thought don't think about it. Uh, the, the, so it's it's not, it's not like uh, common, but it's not, you're not the only one. There is a study on death that basically faces people with their death. And it, we see that many people shut down part of their brain when they see, the, what they did in study is they basically show you a picture. And then at some point they flash a picture of you being buried just like this. And people's brain mostly shut down. They couldn't take it. However, there was a group of people, about 10%, who totally kind of, they saw pictures and they saw their own death and it was another picture. So, you know, among 10%, not zero. But then again, at the same time, I do believe the, um, is it Ernest Becker, the uh, book, The Worm at the Core, about terror management theory, that like basically everything we do is just to manage our terror yeah, but... because we know we're going to die, like just the way that we like distract ourselves, the way that we need accolades and awards and and family shields, like the way that we have to like make ourselves, um, uh, like immortalize ourselves with trophies and shit. So here's the cool part. Ready? 2019, just before the pandemic, the study comes out that shows that we can now start playing with death and uh, maybe prolong life a bit after you die. So here's what they did in the study. This is a Nature 2019 and British 2019. Does anyone look at the news now and like, I want to live longer. <laughs> Okay. This is a weird time to want to live longer. Oh, there's a, there's a, this community is uh, after me all the time. Like I get emails from them daily. People who have a, you know, like, uh, how can I uh, replace my body and stay longer? They, I get, I, I get yeah, emails yeah, yeah, all the yeah. time. The people who want to live longer, they're, they really want neuroscientists to help them. Yeah. So the study looked like that. They took a pig. It, it was on pigs. They took pigs that were slaughtered in a slaughterhouse yeah. at, let's say, noon. So the pig is dead at noon. And what they do, as soon as the pig is dead, they extract the brain and put it in a, basically, Incubator. They feed it with nutrients. They use circulate blood. They kept the brains of the pigs alive, and the pig is already dead. And what they showed in the study is that not only can you keep the brain active and thinking for hours in this case after the pig is dead, but also that you can actually extract information. You can actually kind of zap out of the brain, and it responds if you want. So you can essentially communicate with the dead pig's brain after it's dead. So you can imagine us doing it first with humans. So, you know, you die at noon and we basically take the body and say, okay, Whitney version one is dead, but in the tube here in the aquarium, we have Whitney still with us. But will the brain be like, I'm fucking dead. What the fuck? Why'd you do that? <laughs> That's funny. Like, okay. I mean, I'm just <laughs> saying, does it know your, the body's yeah. dead? So, so, so the, I feel like there's no, got, not going to be a lot of conversation that's not about like, what the <laughs> fuck, I'm dead. Why are you asking me? <laughs> like, <laughs> but that, maybe people are going to be a lot more real when they're like dead. Like, the brain knows... Yeah. It was dead. I mean, who knows? It's big, but like, I mean, I'm totally talking about... I'm just like, fucking and... kill the rest of me. <laughs> Fuck this. Okay. I, I cannot see that being like a... No, Useful a thing. Like grandma said, like, conversation. I don't want to give the recipe. Like, Why alone. didn't you stop me from dying? Why the fuck are you <laughs> asking you. me all these questions? Why you come? Where were you when I had the gun? Uh -huh. uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's... Oh, I, I watched this documentary about life after death, and one of the big arguments for that something exists after death was that someone could die on an operating table and there'd be absolutely no brain activity, but they'd be aware of something happening in the room. So I guess that means that's just their so, brain. I mean, so, so just to be clear, this only pigs, only one study, this is all now kind of what we can do it, but, but it made scientists really start imagining like, okay, like, can we, you know, imagine like Sherlock Holmes book, like you, yeah. you go and you find a dead body and you kind of, instead of saying like, like let's find who it is, you ask the body, like who killed you? Yeah. The butler. Thank you. Let's go. <laughs> this is like a, this is like the Sherlock Holmes book or, 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 you know, someone dies and you say, hey, who do you want the money to go to? Right? Like you didn't write a will, we can ask you. So there's some kind of nice thing about it right now, the, the most, the coolest and, and weirdest, uh, thing that people play with is using dead people's brain, so to speak, for tasks. You basically have the brain do chores for you. So you kind of, I mean, the chores are really boring, but like you basically, there's a, there's a task that, that a lot of people are caring, interested in, which is uh, classifying images. Even in you know? death, you'll be working. <laughs> I mean, if you guys make my dead brain or live brain sort images, <laughs> I swear to fucking God. Cat, dog, cat, cat, dog. That's a... And is that what like billionaires are just gonna have like nine brains like just in their house like working for them? 